Hello Internet, Internet. Big Dave here, and I am cheap. Hello Internet, it's Big Dave here, and I am cheap. How cheap? Well, I'm so cheap that I played and enjoyed a free-to-play weekend of Defiance. This game comes to us from Tryon Worlds, makers of one of my all-time favorite MMORPGs, Rift, and it was developed in partnership with Sci-Fi. So there's actually a television series, a companion piece, that goes along with the game and vice versa. They do take place in two separate areas. I'll kind of talk a little bit, if I can, about the interactions that I experienced between myself and some of the aspects of the television show in the time that I played the game. But really, I don't want to bog down too much in that. I want this to be a quick and concise overview of the impressions that I had during the four to six hours that I played Defiance during the free-to-play weekend. So what is Defiance? Now, if I had to summarize it in one word, and nobody's forcing me to summarize it in one word, I'm just choosing to, I would say Defiance is an emulsion. And what do I mean by that? Well, an emulsion is a mixture of two things that don't necessarily mix. It's a suspension of one thing in another. It's mixing oil and water. It's mayonnaise. Defiance is mayonnaise. But let me explain. It's an MMO, right? It's an MMORPG. I mean, straight out, it has quests. It has skill trees. It's an MMORPG. But it's also a third-person shooter. It's got running around. It's got dodging. It's got shooting guns. It's got perks. The thing that they have to do here, and the thing that they do successfully, is combine those two things. Whip them together with vigorous action until they meld into one like an emulsion. See, I brought it around. Right, but let's move on before we stomp this metaphor to death. It's a hybrid, plain and simple. And I think a lot of companies could have really screwed this up, but Tryon Worlds had a unique perspective on it. Having already developed a successful MMORPG, they had the tools necessary to create this game and make it work. There's also a lot that could have gone wrong with the tie-in to a sci-fi television series. First of all, the series could have sucked, And to be frank, I don't know if it sucks or not. I've not actually watched it, but I've heard for the most part that it's all right. You know, it's not the next Battlestar Galactica, but it's pretty decent. It's an all right show. It's been picked up for a second season, and it should be an interesting ride to watch how these two things develop. Now, I wish I could speak with a little more authority on how they're currently pulling off the television show video game tie together, but there really isn't a lot in the early stages of the game, at least not the parts that I played. And of course I didn't watch the television show, so I have no idea if on the television show they say things like, hey, how about them guys over in San Francisco? They took down a giant alien queen. I don't know. But what does happen in terms of interaction between the television characters and the uh, MMO characters is that early on in your character's existence, there is what they call an arc fall. And an arc fall Uh, If you want a really bad description of what it is, it's like a meteor or something that falls to the earth, and I guess there's technology in it, like, I don't know, laser guns or something, and people fight over it, and they want to get it because it's good. That's pretty much what I took away from the flavor text and the VO regarding Arc Falls. But you want them, okay? That that was the main point that they reinforced. And after we successfully uh, got an arc fall together, they kind of gave me the old, uh, hey, uh, you want to make some space bucks? Come on down to the space bar and we'll have some space adventures. Uh, even though the game's on Earth and not in space, but you get my point. And that's exactly uh, the VO word for word from the game. So, spoilers. But I didn't get to follow that. I didn't get to continue that uh, thread and see where that goes. So I'm sure eventually they go off to be with the television group in St. Louis while you stay behind where the MMO is set in San Francisco. So I guess that's a good time for a quick uh, bit about the story. Uh, The backstory is totally convoluted. It's like Alien Nation meets District 9 meets, I don't know, War of the Worlds. There are aliens, and I think there's peaceful coexistence somehow and then there's a war and it's changing earth and resistance i i don't know i mean i've heard someone describe it as as dense sci-fi like the kind of meaty sci-fi that you can sink your teeth into unfortunately it was just it was a bigger bite than i was willing to take 
But in terms of the MMO, in terms of Defiance the game, you start out in an airship and uh, we follow the adventures of Dr. Von Bald Guy, who is hunting this ARC technology. And then there's explosions and the ship crashes, you eject, you are discovered by one of these very severely brow-ridged, midriff-exposed, sort of orangish alien sex pots. And she frees you from your escape pod, and then you go on a hunt for Dr. Von Bald Guy. And it's a pretty effective starting zone. You know, you're constantly on his trail, you're moving along, you're discovering things about the world, they're introducing you to your powers. Uh, it's pretty good, all in all. I have no idea, no idea at all where the story goes beyond that initial starting zone. But I have to say that I had a lot of fun in the first uh, couple of hours and, and beyond the, the, the four to six hours that I did play of the game. And it seemed like it had some merit. You have a cool little holographic lady that pops up and she kind of helps you along. She's sort of a mobile quest giver and it kind of cuts through a lot of the uh, BS of older style MMOs where it's like quest hub, quest hub, quest hub. Every now and then she just pops up and says, hey, go over here and do this thing. And when you're done, she says, here's your reward for this thing. It moved the story along. It cut down on your run back time for, for some quests. Uh, ultimately, it was a good mechanic. And I think overall, that's sort of how I would sum up Defiance in general. Good mechanics. The shooting is probably the weakest thing. It's very vanilla third person shooter combat. There is no cover. You can dodge around a bit. But it's very vanilla. It's very basic. If you've got a gun with a scope on it, then you, you zoom into a first-person scope. Otherwise, you just the camera goes tighter on your third-person view when you uh, aim down sights. Pretty simple stuff. The guns, though, very Borderlands style when it comes to guns. There are classes of guns, assault rifles, submachine guns, pistols, uh, sniper rifles, that sort of thing. And those guns then have status effects, poisons and things like that. Uh, very much Borderlands-inspired. In uh, but I found it to be great and fun and effective trying to find that weapon that matches up with my play style or making sure that I have that weapon on me that I know is going to be lethal versus the enemies that I'm going to encounter in an area. Uh, so while the actual shooting was very bland, uh, basic, I don't want to say maybe bland is maybe, I don't know, mediocre. I, I, that's kind of the word that comes to mind. And, and a lot of people, I think, when you say mediocre, think that you have a, that, that, that has a negative con connotation. But it really just means completely average and, and not special or unique in any way. And that's how I would describe the shooting. Adequate is another word that comes to mind. It is good enough not to be bad and not to drag the whole experience down. It could be better and the game would be better as a result of that, but it's good enough. It's, it's a C. How about that? It's a solid, the shooting is a solid C, maybe C minus trending towards D plus C minus the shooting is a C minus that's a box quote right there the shooting is a C minus big Dave is cheap dot com right what was I saying I don't know I was saying stupid things out of my stupid mouth mechanics solid right so they have MMO uh, style skill trees well sort of they have the skill grid and uh, yeah you got four basic skills four main skills these are your active skills you go through and you select those skills uh, in an early part of the game. They kind of give you a choice. They give you a demo of each skill. One of them's a cloak. One of them is an overcharge, super damage uh, buff to your weapon. One of them is a little clone that runs out and uh, distracts enemies. And the other one is a uh, run-up, like, like a full-on linebacker charge. And you just run up and wail away on guys with uh, enhanced melee damage. Uh, so each one of these kind of caters towards a very specific play style, and that's how they create classes in the game where there aren't really any classes technically. You're all just arc hunters. And how you define your skill tree defines your actual play style. And there are people who would say that is still a class-based MMO because you're still choosing a primary focus. Whether you're saying, I want to be a mage at the title screen or not, you're still choosing stealth, and therefore that is dictating your entire play style and how you'll contribute to your team or how you contribute to damage and, and all those factors that go into actually playing and succeeding at the game. But I digress, as I so often do. Good skills, I enjoyed them. They use a perk system, which is kind of interesting. You unlock perks at certain levels, and the skills that you're actually buying in your skill tree can then be socketed into those perk slots. There's a uh, whole thing with PvP that I didn't even touch. Uh, there is a PvP 
I don't know if there's co-op. I don't know what's going on. There's probably a horde mode if I had to guess. Uh, I didn't touch the PvP just because I wanted to focus on the single player. Oh, and I can't move on uh, without talking about one of my favorite uh, mechanics, and that was the questing. So there's kind of two things here with the questing, and they're sort of related to one another. There are these uh, public quests, these sort of hotspots, or whatever you call them, that uh, happen in the world. So there are some generic ones that sort of happen and reset. You know, these two trucks are getting attacked by mutants. You help them. Ten minutes later, they're getting attacked by mutants again. Then there are larger sort of world events that happen. And uh, Tryon really put some work into that kind of stuff in Rift, where they had the little individual rifts that happened as little multi-stage quest events, and then they also had larger zone invasions, where you actually had to fight back a full-scale invasion uh, by one of the uh, planes of Talara. This is maybe not to that point, or I wasn't able to see if it was to that point, because the, the one event that I participated in, we kind of just wiped the floor with them. There was like 60 or 80 or 100 of us, and we just destroyed... Uh, the event, and it was a ton of fun, and I really enjoyed it. I really, really enjoyed it. It was the sort of thing that kind of broke up the, the monotony of the day-to-day -day of the questing of a game like an MMO. The other thing that really broke that up was the fact that quests that you take are not so much quests, they're more like events. So you get a quest that says, go to this medical compound and rescue these eight guys who, they, who they've uh, the mutants have captured, right? Simple, right? You're like, okay, I'm going to go click on eight guys. You get there, someone else is already rescuing these guys, right? He's rescued two of them already. So you're thinking, great, now I gotta wait for these two guys to respawn, and I've gotta rescue my eight guys. No, because the quest happens in a series of stages. So he's already rescued two guys, there's only six left to rescue. You help him rescue those six guys, then you transition into the next portion of the quest where you get attacked by three waves of baddies. And then after you survive the three waves, the bad guy in the big jeep pulls up with the machine gun and you kill him and the quest is over. And it's it's an event and it's, it's, a, it's an organic co-op experience. And it really is kind of a revelation in terms of how your actual story questing can occur. That somebody is there, someone is doing a quest. That quest isn't just a task, you know? It's not just collect these bear noses or, you know, everybody wait in line to kill this single mini boss uh, to take your turn at killing him or whatever. It's actually, you know, this is something we got to do. We got to save these guys. Let's go save these guys. And I really found it just so enjoyable, just super, super enjoyable. And ultimately, that's how I would characterize my entire experience with Defiance. Enjoyable. I mean, it's just a fun game. I'm smiling even now as I'm recounting this stuff to you guys. It's just a fun game. It's an interesting entry into the MMORPG genre, and I don't hesitate to call this an MMORPG because while it is a shooter at its core, if you really look at it and break it down, it's an MMORPG. There's questing, there's skilling up, there's the level grind, there's all that stuff. Uh, you look at a game like Guild Wars that has active combat and uh, questing and all that stuff, how much are these really different from one another? You're shooting guns in one, sure, but that's kind of the basic difference between those two games in terms of play style, what you're doing, where you're going. So it's an interesting entry into that MMORPG market. Uh, right now it retails for about 50 bucks. There is no subscription fee, so it's a one-time purchase. But of course the question is, is it worth it? Is it worth that one-time purchase, that 50 bucks? Uh, now from a craftsmanship standpoint, from a content standpoint, absolutely. There's no argument to be made that there isn't $50 worth of content in this game, or $60, or $70, or $80 worth of content in this game. There absolutely is, and it's absolutely justified in being positioned at that full price point. Uh, I don't have any problem with where they've priced the game. What I have a problem with is parting with my precious, precious money. So it's been on sale for 30% off, and I really did heavily think about it when it was on sale for that price, uh, but I just couldn't do it. I could not fight it. I couldn't make myself, I couldn't make my finger click the, the uh, add to cart button, I just couldn't do it. Uh, but I think I could overcome that uh, if Tryon would say put it on sale for 20 bucks, maybe 15 bucks. I think I could definitely overcome those uh, nerve impulses to uh, pull away and not add it to my cart and purchase it through PayPal if it was on sale for uh, $20. So tempt me, Tryon Worlds. Try me, see what happens. 
And on that note, it's time to wrap this up. Actually, it's way past time to wrap this up. Anybody who stayed for this entire video, what's wrong with you? Don't you have friends or things to do or don't you want to watch better videos by more popular YouTubers? Please, please go. Uh, but in all seriousness, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for all your support. Uh, I really enjoyed this game. I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, I have been Big Dave. Until next time, take it easy.